On AuthorTube and BookTube, there is often a lot of talk about tropes, and this certainly helps readers to pick which books they may like to read, or for those who are self-aware enough to know what kinds of tropes they do or don't enjoy, um, it can help them pick the right book. But really, it's the subgenre that most readers are going to pick up on quickly. The trope is something the author will use as a tool to construct the plot. Clear as mud? Okay, stay tuned because today we're going to go over the distinctions. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things books and publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's topic, don't forget to hit subscribe. You'll be notified when I put out new videos every week about publishing, making a career to being an author, and now being a mompreneur. So when I announced I would do the genre series, one of the first questions posted on that video was about the difference between tropes and subgenres, um, specifically requested by Jean Shelby Books um, for my personal update video back in October 2022. You should check out her channel, by the way. Now, I think this is a great way to kick off the series. Um, if you missed the first video, you can find that right here. Because if you're an author and you don't have these distinctions clear in your mind, then as you go to write, promote, pitch your book, um, you're probably going to run into some walls. So let's start with the basic definitions here. Um, so let's start with trope. So from dictionary.com, it says a convention or device that establishes a predictable or stereotypical representation of a character setting scenario in a creative work. So there were actually quite a few definitions that I found. Um, and I think this is where new authors or non authors get confused when those in the writing community discuss tropes. I think the term itself has a negative connotation, which I don't necessarily think it deserves. Um, because at the end of the day, so many stories can be broken down into some of these recurring conventions and themes, right? So some readers will pick a book or not pick it based on the trope. And just like there are certain standards to define the genre, you have certain reader expectations to meet with the trope. So some of these will carry throughout the full line of the story, and some are just devices for the inciting incident of the story. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of common tropes. So if you just look in general fiction tropes, you have the damsel in distress, the orphan child with superpowers, or it was all a dream. So at the very end, they wake up and they think, oh, what a crazy dream I had. Like that's a trope. Um, Romance tropes, like holy moly, are there ever romance fiction tropes? Um, but there's a few common ones you may have heard. So like friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, fake dating. So those are common tropes that kind of build what the plot's going to be of this romance so that at the end they're going to have their happily ever after because they have to have their happily ever after. Um, certain sci-fi tropes are the aliens are humans or lost in space. Um, now those are story devices, character archetypes, or just other mechanisms to start the story or complete it or one element of it. And that's what makes it a trope. Um, it's that it's this expected structure. Um, so when an audience member is reading that or they get to the certain intro, like, okay, I kind of know how this is going to go, but they may like that um, setup. Now, subgenre is a different division within your larger genre. Um, so Merriam-Webster -West even says a genre that is part of a larger genre. That's it. That's the definition of subgenre. So if we kind of go back, we just talked about like romance tropes and sci-fi tropes. So let's look at romance subgenres. So there's historical romance, there's contemporary romance, there's billionaires romance. Like there are lots of different subgenres where the entire story is going to fit in to one of these larger categories. Um, and in science fiction, you have time travel, ap apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic, action and adventure. Do I write in all of those subgenres? I sure do. Um, now, you could certainly find the trope friends to lovers. So going back to the romance example, you could certainly find the trope friends to lovers in books in each of those romantic subgenres. The subgenre tells the overall category of the story. People who like historical romance may not like billionaire romance. So when they browse the books, they will look under the historical romance category, whether that's on Amazon or in their um, library. As they read the book description, they may be able to tell that it will be a friends to lovers romance. So that's kind of an example of how that is distinct. Um, now, I hope this gave you an idea of what the two terms are, how they differ, and how both authors and readers use them. And I would definitely challenge you to try and go back to the books you've written or the book that you're working on and identify that. Or maybe if you haven't written a book yet, um, look at some of your favorite books and try to identify, okay, what's the genre, what's the subgenre, and what are the tropes that I can see here? Because I think the more familiar you 
are are as an author in identifying them, it's going to be that much easier for you to then market them properly when the time comes and categorize them properly when the time comes. Okay, all my sources for the definitions and discussions and examples are below. um, So you can check out those references as well to do more research. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up hit subscribe or even hit that thanks button. That lets YouTube know that you found this information helpful and can get it in front of more authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book.